Greetings, everyone. I'm happy to be able to join you and share God's word with you by a video this week as I'm away this uh, Sunday today in uh, meetings in Wisconsin and then our uh, district pastors conference, which will be near Seattle in a town called Kennewick, Washington this week. So I'll be sharing God's word with you from Luke chapter four, which is our gospel lesson today. And we'll start with a prayer. Lord God, uh, we thank you for calling us to faith by your Holy Spirit. And today, we pray that you would equip us and encourage us to live out our lives as you have called us in the special ways you give to each one of us to serve each other as we serve you. We pray that you would equip us and strengthen us by your spirit today. Amen. So I'm taping this for you guys all on Wednesday. Yesterday, uh, yesterday morning, the headline was that the greatest football player who ever played the game, Tom Brady, is officially retiring from football. So all the news sites had stories about it, and everybody was making comments, and people on Facebook, Facebook friends were commenting on how Tom Brady was finally stepping down and how they're going to miss seeing him playing in football games. Now, maybe you don't care about football. Maybe you do, and you know who he is. While we can all say we might miss him playing material, playing football, the fact is, though, it's not going to materially impact anyone's life, at least not our lives. But I know something that does impact our lives, like, say, happened to our neighborhood just a few weeks ago, when after the snowstorm and then for a few, well, a week or two after that, the recycling and trash trucks stopped coming through. Pretty soon, those bins full of plastic containers started to overflow and to the street, and trash and recycling started to pile up and up and up and didn't stop, and people started complaining, but that didn't bring the recycling and trash trucks through. Now, admittedly, that's a pretty thankless job, hauling away people's recycling and trash. But the moment those guys didn't come, the moment they didn't come through, our lives were very much materially impacted, quite literally. And yes, I'm comparing the greatest football player with sanitation crews who haul away trash and recycling on purpose. Because Tom Brady gets lots of praise fame, glory, money, and all of this for throwing a football. But those guys who haul away recycling and trash do one of the most undesirable and thankless jobs that we can think of. They are far more important to our daily lives, even though no one knows their names and they don't get accolades when they stop doing their jobs. Now, Jesus today has some encouragement for us, especially if you have to do jobs, whether that's at home or at work, that go unnoticed and unthanked. Jesus encourages us as we look at this story from Luke chapter 4, simply by being at the center of the story, Jesus truly adds meaning to your day and to the jobs and tasks that you have to do. In fact, even more than that, you could say that through Jesus, God unmasks that our callings in life, doing those little mundane, ordinary tasks, are ways that we actually serve him by serving each other. Well, let's look at what I mean in the beginning of the story. So we'll look at the first couple of verses here. From Luke chapter 4. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now, Simon's mother in law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. Now, at 
first glance, this story appears just to be another one of these healing stories of which there's quite a few in the Gospels, and especially with Luke, who was the doctor, just one of another miracle that Jesus performs. Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law, Simon Peter's mother-in-law, who had a fever. For Jesus, this kind of healing is it's child's play. And after he healed this, we hear later on that all these other people brought sick family members, and he could heal them one after the next so that by nightfall, Peter's house turned into kind of like a small medical clinic. But here's the curious detail about this story. So if you were reading along in Luke's gospel and didn't know any better, you might find this story and wonder to yourself, who is this Simon guy? Because Luke hasn't introduced Simon to us at all, let alone his wife or his mother-in-law. And of course, we all know him better as Peter, Jesus' most famous disciple, without a doubt. And his mother-in-law is lying sick in bed. Now, Luke describes this scene with an, with an idiom that we don't really have in English. He says, quite literally, Simon's mother-in-law was being constrained and held back by this fever. Now, we often say things like, I caught a cold or I caught the flu. But to Luke's culture, the flu and the cold catch you, and they hold you down. And this fever was holding Peter's mother-in-law back from doing what it was she really wanted to do. So Jesus rebuked the fever, and whatever the illness was left her. But then the gospel tells us her reaction. It says she immediately got up and started serving them, waiting on them. Now, my guess is since it was the end of the day, she immediately started cooking a dinner for them and set a meal before Jesus and Peter and whoever else might have been in the house. And maybe Peter's wife was helping. We don't really know. But we do hear Luke describe something that happens again and again in the Gospels, that Jesus allows women, especially women, not only them, to serve him, to provide a meal for him or provide for his needs in that way. Another example that you may remember is the story of Mary and Martha, and Jesus goes to their house, and what was Martha doing? But serving Jesus a meal. In the stories of Matthew's gospel, he mentions a whole group of women who followed Jesus around from place to place to provide for his needs and the needs of his disciples. And they then stand at the foot of the cross as Jesus was dying for us. Now, as the son of God, the one who created all things, I think Jesus was fully capable of taking care of himself. And I suppose if he really wanted to, he could have miraculously made dinner for everybody else. But what we see in this story is that Jesus is allowing people to serve him, Peter's mother-in-law in particular, inviting them into, his, into their homes, providing for him what he needed, and welcoming that service to him with thankfulness. Strangely, though, I guess it seems a little odd for us, considering that one of Jesus' most famous statements about himself in Matthew 20, 28 says this, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. For sure, Jesus comes to serve us and to be our savior. And he comes to give his life for us and to buy us back from sin. That was his true and greatest purpose. But there's also this other thing happening here. Jesus invites us and allows us to thank and to praise God by serving in the many ways that he has enabled us and gifted us to serve. It's things as simple as what Peter's mother-in-law does, like preparing a meal or cleaning up after everyone else. 
taking a minute to check in on somebody by sending them a message or giving them a call, saying a prayer with someone, even just taking out the trash. Jesus welcomes and calls us to recognize that we are serving God when we serve each other. In fact, when Jesus rose from the dead, after he finished paying for our sins, and he ascended to heaven, he really confirms this because he doesn't entrust the job of sharing his good news, the gospel, this very important work of preaching and teaching his word to, to angels, and he doesn't stick around to do it himself. No, he gave that job to us, to his disciples, to the apostles, to his church, to you and me, to people who were just simple fishermen and tax collectors, to even a doctor like Luke. Now, Martin Luther calls this very strange idea that God works through us to serve each other. He calls it the masks of God, namely that through our callings in life, we're not just doing work to earn money and put food on the table for ourselves. Through our callings, through the work we do, even simple tasks, God is using us to actually work through us to serve each other, to serve other people. So let's say, for example, say you have a chicken for dinner tonight. God was working through the mask of the farmer who raised the chicken that you eat, and through the trucker who supplies the farm, and then brings that chicken to market, to the people who work in the meat factory, who pluck and prepare that chicken and put it in that nice styrofoam packaging for you. To the grocery store workers who stock it in the grocery store. And to all the other people who put all the other ingredients together to make that one meal that you're going to have with the chicken. Ultimately, he works through you if you're the one preparing that meal for your family. And when you serve others, or when they serve you, God wants, uh, Jesus wants us to see that God is working through you to bless and to serve everyone around you. Now, what does this do for your work and the meaning of it? Doesn't that raise the value that even the most thankless of jobs, jobs that nobody else wants to do, like taking out the trash, we start to recognize that God is at work blessing people as we do this. We may not always recognize that in each other. Maybe we take it for granted. We don't say thank you enough. That's for sure. We see that borne out in, the, in this example of this story by the fact that, well, Peter's mother-in-law is, remains completely anonymous to us. We know nothing about this woman save for this one little story about her. But we do see God's hand at work through her and Jesus' acceptance of her loving service as proof that God is pleased when we do. Of course, though, there do come moments when we would much prefer that our blessings and our service directly come from God himself. And that's exactly what happens in this story after Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. So here's how the story keeps going, starting at verse 40. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sicknesses, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Jesus 
Jesus graciously healed the sick and drove out demons and gave each one of these people this personal touch and attention and love that only he could give late into the night, it seems. And when finally Jesus left, the next morning, he went to get away to a quiet place by himself. And even then, when the people insisted, oh, please come back, Jesus. Instead, his response was he was sent to go and preach the good news in other towns. Now, it's not like Jesus doesn't care about these people's sicknesses and suffering. He certainly does. But Jesus left to go and preach the good news in other places. And as he did, he left people behind, people who could care for those who were sick and suffering. People like doctors and nurses who care for us when we're ill. Firefighters and police officers who help protect our lives. Factory workers, farmers, truckers, and all those people who do their work, through their work, are providing for us what we need to go on living our lives. Jesus wants us to see God's loving hand to care for us through these people, especially when we don't always appreciate that. Now, forgive me if you've heard this, this little story before, but there was a man who was stuck on his rooftop during a flood, and he was praying to God for help. Soon, a man in a rowboat came by. The man shouted to this guy who's stuck on his roof, hey, jump in, I can save you. The stranded man shouted back, oh, no, 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 it's okay. I'm praying to God, and he's going to save me. So the rowboat kept going. Then a motorboat came by. The man in the motorboat shouted down, shouted up as well, hey, hey, up there, jump in. I can save you. To this, the man who was stranded said, oh, no, thank you very much, but I'm praying to God, and he's going to save me. I have faith. So the motorboat went on. Then a helicopter came by. The pilot shouted down, grab onto this rope. I'll lift you up to safety. To this, the stranded man again replied, no, thank you. I'm praying to God, and he is going to save me. I have faith. So the, kept, the helicopter reluctantly flew away as well. Soon enough, though, the water rose above the rooftop and the man drowned. He went to heaven and he finally got to discuss this whole situation with God, at which point he exclaimed, I had faith in you, but you didn't save me. You let me drown. I don't understand. Why? To this, God replied, I sent you a rowboat a motorboat, and a helicopter. What more could you expect? God works through masks. He works through people. And even a silly story like this illustrates that when we see other people serving, God wants us to see his hand behind that. Which brings us back to all those sanitation workers who haul away your recycling and your trash, and people who do all the other thankless jobs around you. Suddenly, we begin to realize that all of these people, as they are going about their day doing their work, God is the one serving and providing for us. And it's an even better reminder when we go about our day and doing the thankless tasks that are a part of our jobs whether that's taking out the trash or recycling or hauling it down to the dumpster bins or making meals or doing some boring thing that you don't like to do, just remember that God is working through you as well. That he's unmasking his calling to you to be a blessing to other people even as you go about your day. So go about your day in service and love to God, unmasked as one called by him. Amen. Thank you for joining me with God's word. We close with a short prayer. Lord God, may you 
work through each one of us as we go about our day, doing our tasks, to be blessings to all the people around us. Help us to see that in each other, your hand in providing and caring for us. More than that, help those people whom we meet through our daily work to see your love and open their eyes to their Savior. Amen. Thank you very much.